what do you do when you get to the destination when you're the guy? Well, you're here. So what you'd like to do is you go on ahead and put your grip arm on this landmark and say, go ahead, we're at the end of the hallway. If you want to trail your her arm down, then you can find out what she's touching and you know that it's a safe place because she's brought you there and you've done your job. All right, and if you want to put your back, Cynthia, to this uh, ledge here, and we will get started talking case skills. Where are we? Do you know? Third floor. Um, I don't know. We're at some window. At a window, yeah. You can touch anything you want. Is there anything around here? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Is it a window, window or a door? How do you know? Well, it feels like this one, kind of. It feels like a window. Why is that? Because it feels like this. Mm hmm. Could be a glass door. Could be. Why is it not a door? Because it's lit. <laughs> it's not a door, Grace. It's a window. <laughs> That's why, right? <laughs> um, do we know if we're at the east end or the west end? I lost track. You did? Yes. All right. Um, so we're at the west end Okay. of the third floor. You know what would be interesting? Do you remember what the hundred number is for the basement where we were yesterday or the day before? On the West End? Yeah. Was it 469? Yeah, it was like 400 something, right? Okay. All the numbers down in the basement were 400. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm curious, what are the numbers up here? What's the first one? Do you want to find a room number to find out? Or? All right, so um, what we're going to do is you're just going to hold your cane kind of out in front of you a little bit. As you trail forward with your hand on the left, you're going to use your hand trailing mostly to look for a door. And we'll find and see if we can find a little number. Usually on the right, right? Yeah. Six? Six. And this particular room number is. Six one one. All right, so we know the West End has room six one one at the very end. All right, let's go back to the window. Nice. Good. Go all the way up. In fact, I'm going to show you a technique for that. Come turn back towards me. Turn around and reapproach again. So the, the cane is out mm -hmm. and it finds the end. And so what you'll do is as it comes, as you walk forward, you kind of twist it, keep it on there and let it lead the way. And so that cane is kind of, you can do all sorts of things with it now. Mm -hmm. And it's between you and whatever it's touching. Okay. And that way you kind of get closer to it, but you always keep the cane in the way. All right, let's turn around and put your back. So this, this technique of the two point touch breaks it down, you know, skill by skill by skill. So we're gonna do that. And part of it is walking in the skill, you know, positioning, back and forth. So we'll always come back here and then we'll go to the other end and back. So it's a little short end, but we'll see both sides. Okay. So this is the first skill is um, the grip. Do you know what the grip looks like for touch technique? No. Do you know anything about the handle that you're touching, the grip handle? What does it feel like? Rubbery. It's rubbery. Anything else? Ridgy. Got some ridges on there. Mm -hmm. Makes it easier to hold on to. Yep. And are all the sides the same shape? No. No? This one's flat. So there's a this flat side. side. And this one's round. Yeah, so there's a flat side and the rest of it's sort of round. And that flat side is where we're going to hold on to it with our index finger. So in other words, it's just like that. And we call it shaking hands with the cane. So for example, if I would like to take it out, I go, hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's shaking hands with the cane. And you naturally brought your index finger along the flat side, which is, this is the top of your finger now. Okay. 
right? That tip of the cane is transmitting everything to your finger, which is then transmitting up to your brain. So really, the tip of the cane is like your finger feeling the floor. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so if you move it around, what's it telling you right now? Um, kind of floor. floor is kind of small, smooth. Maybe tiny. And if you were to tap it a little bit, you'd hear it as that sort of tiny sound. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe marble at Helen Keller National Center. <laughs> marble floors, you think, at the deaf blind? <laughs> <laughs> So that's the grip, and um, that's why we hold it like that. Okay. And you already also have it in the position we like, which is the back of the hand is on one side, the fingers are on the other, you wrapped it around, that's exactly the position. And in fact, I just moved it now to the center of your body. And you can check that by bringing it forward and feeling that it's actually hitting on the center of your body. So it should be in the center. Yeah. Okay. Ideally, if we could keep it in the center, we try. We start with that and see where it goes. Because that way it's a little easier when we get to the arc to sort of be center and have it equal on both sides. So let's, you know what, let's try just maintaining the grip, mm -hmm. the center, with a, with, don't walk it, with your arm a little bit extended, okay? So this is just a check, but the actual position is forward of you. Not too straight, not locked out but ahead of you okay. and well, let's keep it like this you'll follow my voice we're going to go to the other end the east side that we're going to use as our um the end of the hallway so come towards my voice and walk just keep, keep it straight just or? keeping it to center keeping the grip very nice walking along following my voice in order to follow my voice i already have to walk so that's why i'm kind of nonsensing saying, not saying anything. <laughs> and you let me know when you get to the end of this leg of the hallway. Like or something. Right. <laughs> contact. Yeah. And show me a contacting object. So again, in order to do it with this finger, uh -huh. you're going to want to twist. Oh, don't go so fast. Let's try to figure it out. So you're back up one step. So it's easier if it kind of happens while you bring it up. So you want to twist it around. Oh, you're not twisting. Twist. Yeah, twist it around, there you go. And then boom, goes yellow. Okay. But you definitely want to keep the cane first and it's in the way of anything here. And if you wanted to check out this wall or whatever, or find a doorknob or whatever, you could swing it like that, whatever. So let's just check this wall. That's what we're talking about, that motion. Again. Yeah. So it's kind of like that. And you don't want to stick your elbow out too hard. You don't want to okay. hurt yourself. But yeah, basically like okay. that. Um, what's here? What, what do we have? What do we find? How are we going to distinguish this east side from the west side? So this is a wall because I feel wallpaper. Okay. Do you feel any window ledge? No, nothing. Just, just a big old wall. Wow. Good. So that's definitely different mm -hmm. from one to the other. Good. So let's put her back on the wall. Get into position. How's your hand feeling? Good. All right, so let's walk back and then we'll get to the next thing. Good. And we'll just keep following. I don't have the loud shoes on. I can make them loud. Can you follow my footsteps? I can. Good. Keep on walking. That's a nice pace you got there. And then boom. And then turn it around. Yeah. In fact, you don't want to hurt yourself. That's good. Let's go. Let's okay. go. All right. So turn around. Put your back. Very nice. And actually, I want you to, the center of the window has this um, thing. So if you would line up with that a little towards me, you'll find it. And you're kind of centered. All right. So we have the grip, which is what? What's the grip? The grip? Is yeah. How, do you, how would you describe it? Uh, the handshake. The handshake. <laughs> finger down the flat side. Mm -hmm. We have the positioning, which is what? Middle, Body. center, that's right. And not too close, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah, yeah, just like that, okay? The first thing we're gonna try is just to move it back and forth as we walk. We're not gonna worry about how big it is or whatever else it's doing. We're just gonna slide it back and forth, the cane tip. 
Like so that. just like that. Walk. Yep, and try to keep your hands centered as you walk. And go all the way to the east end of the hallway. So for some it's the hips, for some it's the shoulders, and then it's okay to be about an inch wider, like so within that range. It's kind of hard to tell though sometimes when you're making a movement if you're yes. like your body or if you're going too much. Yes, that's right. So what I will do is actually I'm going to have you center yourself again on by this pole. Good. And I'm going to just put my feet then. Go ahead and put your arm. Do you want to rest? Do you want to shake your wrist out a little bit? Or are you okay? Oh, okay. All right. So I want you to extend your arm just a little bit. There you go. So now you're centered. You've got your grip correctly. And I'm going to put my feet. I have handy dandy lines to kind of line up about right. And see if that seems even. Find feet on both sides of your arc now. See, so that's one foot. And that's the other. Mm -hmm. That's good. Move it out here. No, you don't move, but I don't want you to. Yeah, I don't want you to bring your. I don't want your cane to live here, because it will catch on things, and so you want a little bit of a play, so it doesn't always jab you in the stomach. <laughs> like just sometimes. Okay. <laughs> the closer it is, the more it will do that, though. So having it out also gives you more reaction time than um, if it's really close. So how does that feel? Does it feel even or is one more, more than the other? It feels about even. Okay. So just go back and forth a bit without moving. Just your arc. So what do you think the rate of the movement needs to be? Do you think it feels narrow? It feels wide? What do you think? It feels like me. It feels about right, right? <laughs> like Good. And so, yeah, go back and forth. How fast are you walking if you are doing this arc? Would that be a fast pace or a slow pace? Uh, maybe fast. Yeah, fast when you start going back and forth faster, that means you're walking faster. Mm -hmm. But we won't get too much of that, but that's right. So it's really, the arc should go match about how fast you're walking as you walk. So if I were walking slower, it would be how? Slower, yeah. Oh, so it's the same amount of like, Distance, yeah, but this but, would be a slow walk, right? And this would kind of be like more correct. Okay. But the idea is to keep that arc about you the right size so, so you can match your pace. Mm -hmm. If you have way wide, you're gonna find things you don't need to know about, and you won't be able to match your pace. And if it's too narrow, you're not gonna protect enough of your body. And perhaps, you know, it won't really match what your need is from it. So you're trying to find a nice medium. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch you walk again. And I might say it's too narrow, too wide. And you're going to try to adjust it. Okay. And sometimes it's narrow on the right or wide on the right. And it's fine on the left. So then I might just pick a side. Like it's too narrow on the left, too wide on the right. So we're going to practice that a little bit. Okay. Go back and forth. What is this technique called? 
This is actually a constant contact. Okay. Uh, constant contact touch is hilarious, but that's what we say. <laughs> but it's a two-point touch, but it doesn't come off the ground, so that's why. Okay. Constant contact. And again, you're tending to rest mm -hmm. here. If you want to take a break, that's fine. But try doing your arc without resting it on your body if you can. And look how your hand is. See that? That's perfect. <laughs> The, like I said, the, you don't want your wrist to roll over and you don't want it to roll under. You want it to stay like just like it is and go with a hinge of your... I mean, this feels natural. Yeah. To go like this. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. And it, it would. It would affect everything. Yeah. So that's good. But we'll take a break. We'll shake out the hand as needed. Okay. All right. But let's first... Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm shaking mine out. I'm not even using it. So I don't know. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to practice the width of the arc as we go back and forth. Okay? And I'll give you verbal indicators. And I usually do it from behind. Okay. Should Questions? Should I start? Yes, you can do that. Bring it down the ground and the time doesn't come off. Peace. 
because they're nowhere else to go right now. Okay, so where are we? Back at the window? Back at the window. So are we at the same window we left? It feels the same. It's the same, I mean, right? Could be the opposite end. That's the same thing. But How will we know? I don't know. <laughs> ah, we need landmarks. What do we remember about? It's hot over here. Is it hotter over here? Yeah, on the okay. basement, though, like in the sun. Okay. Right. Okay. What else? Um, there was that thing that was the middle thing. All right. And the sludge. So where where are we? The beginning point. So we're at the west end. Yes. What was the room number? Uh, that oh, that's door? right. Let's check that. Good. Use your cane back and forth. Remember, now we got it. Back and forth, back and forth, that's right, that's right. No. This is what? Five, six, five, nine, eight. So the other one was six, eleven. Oh, all right, so come back here to me. What did we find out? Where are we? Uh, I guess, I don't know if we're across or I think the opposite end. The opposite end, it could be. What did we learn? Did we learn anything about the numbers uh, when we were downstairs? Do you remember anything? Yeah. Weren't there? There wasn't a pattern, right? I think it was just, um, I don't think it, it was, was a simple pattern. It was like, it just went in order, but it wasn't like you were right, even right. Right, that's just right. Kept, kept going. Do we remember any of the numbers? Um, the room that we were sitting in was four zero one. Yes. And then I think it was four or six something at the end by the entrance west doors. Okay, so we don't remember. <laughs> no. <laughs> but we do know that the room numbers are not the same, mm -hmm. so that you're not in the same place you started, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And you started on the, which end of the hallway? East? The west end. Oh, we started on the west And then we came all the way as far east as we could go, and we found a new room number, which is 659. Mm -hmm. So which was the first one? 611? 611. So we know that at the west end, the number is smaller mm -hmm. than on the east end. That's interesting. That might help, in other words. Okay. Um, even in odd, we don't get, but we do get sort of high, low, and that's helpful. Okay. So there's a good thing that I want to talk about, and then we're going to practice your cane techniques some more. So you can get out of position, get relaxed just a little bit. We're talking about. I thought, first of all, your cane technique looked like it's already great. How did it feel? My wrist hurts, but other than that, it felt pretty natural. Yeah, and you seem to keep in rhythm with your pace very well and had a nice arc with. I mean, there was a lot of paying attention to my steps while I was walking. Sure, and the more you do it, probably the easier it'll become. So now the thing is, when we start going places, I'm going to ask you to tell me when you get there. Let me know. I say that a lot. But what I need us to do now is be, that I really need you to be the one to let me know when like you sort of did here, but I want it to be very obvious that you want me to know that you know that you've gotten where you've gotten. So that's the nonverbal signal. Why nonverbal? What does that even mean? So you want me to let you know that I got there without saying it? Yeah, without Stopping saying it. Maybe. Without saying it with your mouth. I don't want you to say it because you can't tell exactly where I am. Mm -hmm. If we were to use a verbal signal, then you might project, like broadcast loud enough just in case I'm down the hall or you don't know where. So you're stopping and kind of taking my key out of position, maybe? Show me. Kind of. I wasn't I'm just maybe stand here like this. Okay. That's pretty sly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it shows that I'm done. Yeah. Kind of like that. You, you could also sort of like wiggle your hand up and go, hey, you know, I'm done that way. I'll try to pick up on this one. If it's too subtle, you might need a... <laughs> <laughs> Hit me over there if it's something a little more obvious, but that I'll look for. I'll okay. look for this. 
which means that you're here. And you're ready for me to ask you, where are you, right? Which it will always pretty much be the first question out of my mouth. Where are you? I want you to think about it. I want you to be able to tell me, and then I'm gonna ask you how you know. And I want you to have a really good answer. And if you don't have a good answer, like you, we just had, we weren't sure, mm -hmm. then we figured out a way to be sure. We found a landmark. Okay. And what's a landmark, for example? What do we use? This window right here. It's a clue. It's not really different from the other one you said. So unless it's unique and permanent, it's only a clue because this window, There's other window. feels just like the other window, unless the sunshine or something. So I mean from right here, only the room number. The room number is a terrific landmark. It is both unique and permanent and accessible. You just have to go find it, mm -hmm. right? And you have to have that in mind. I need to confirm it to myself that I know and I can prove to anyone who asks, especially myself, that I know where I am. That I know I'm on the east side because this room number is the right height number, whatever. If you don't, then we'll go find something, right? I mean, that that's number two. Where are you? How do you know? Then if we're going to malls, we can do route planning from there. But the first and foremost is where are you and how do you know? And that's what I'm going to be asking. But who's going to be the start of that conversation is going to be you. Okay. By doing the number. Exactly. By letting me know that you're where you want to be. So this is one example of using the nonverbal signal, arriving at the destination and letting me know. Another time you could use it is if you feel you need some instruction. <laughs> You're not sure where you are, you feel disoriented, you have a question, then stop, plant your feet. What does that mean, plant your feet? Yep, it means don't move them. Mm -hmm. Don't a little bit move them either. Don't even stick one out to the side and put your hip out. Keep them both, if you can, in the same direction when you when you were walking. And at that point, if you're getting, you'll like move from two-point touch to your um, current state, and you'd expect me to come over and say, hey, where are you? And we'd get that position, and then I'd ask, what's what? And you'd let me know why you want to talk to me. So I want you to recognize when you have a problem that needs a solution. Because that's a lot of traveling when you're blind is these problems come up that all we have to do is find a solution. So recognizing there's a problem is the most important thing. Okay. Because then there's always a solution. Walking along like Mr. Magoo, <laughs> unaware of all the problems around, that's not good. So, okay. Do you have any questions about that? Nope. You understand nonverbal signal, what yes. it's for? It's for you to get me to help you. Okay. Yes? Yes. You're in charge. That's really what it is. If I see a time where it would be a good idea, I'll let you know. This might be a good time if you want to use your nonverbal signal. Okay. Use it. So I'll let you know if it doesn't seem like you're using it, or if you're using it too much, I'll let you know too. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Nope. So let's practice. Let's go back to the West End.
point are we here? I'm at the West End. Because I feel the room number 611. Very nice. How did it go with the uh, walking? Good. Yeah, I thought so. It gets good. easier as you keep practicing. Yeah, very good. Um, let's go all, actually all the way to the West End again. I want to show you one more thing. So don't turn back around. Just stay like that. Okay. So for example, when you came in contact with those, um, what are we going to call those? What kind of jut out of this? When we come down the hallway, like you hit a wall and mm -hmm. then you have to move over. What are we going to call that? Mm -hmm. Is it asking anybody over here from the gallery? <laughs> I don't know what the term would be. But we can make it up. Um, we can call them annoyances. <laughs> walls. Mm -hmm. Walls in the way. So what you have been doing, let me call it shimmy shaking, side winding. Is that how you usually walk? No. No? I me mean, either. What would you do? Well, you'd be excited to me when you do that, but when I hit the wall. Yeah. I usually feel to see where the end of it is. Yeah. I know. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, maybe I should turn around. Maybe we should pick a direction. And maybe we should keep that cane in the direction we're walking. So if you are going to sidewind, which I don't say you can't do, I just want you to check over here mm -hmm. to the side as you wind your way over, right? Because if the cane is here and you're walking sideways, then you're walking into unprotected space. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying you can't walk sideways. So do it like diagonal. Yeah, go ahead and put that cane in the direction. It might be easier to turn and just, you know, keep it in front. My worry well, I guess I would have to touch it to make sure, right? Because then you if I keep, keep going this way, I'll miss the turn. So I have to You can keep your, cane, your hand on and trail. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, let's look normal. <laughs> <laughs> So let's come at this. Why don't we do it at the other end? Let's just go to that first annoyance of the wall. Good, you found it. Right, exactly. Exactly. That's all that's required, right? And you can maintain contact with that left hand as much as you want okay. because you want that information. Mm -hmm. And it's fine the way it is. So let's go back and try it that way. Let's try for elegance. Oh. Graceful, yeah. graceful, efficient, independent, but you know, elegant. What is the other one? Safe, efficient. Safe, efficient, graceful, and independent as possible. That's what we are trying to achieve with our skills. Okay.
Okay, how about the east? All right, come back to the end. Thank you. Very nice. Nice. So that looks pretty good. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. So I do want you when you do turn. You did it mostly, but just keep it moving back and forth. We don't want a stationary cane if you are moving. Because it's important to keep up with your pace. So, what do you think about that? Should we just head back to the west and then be done? Okay. Okay. Make it count. <laughs>
forgot which direction I was going. This is east. Was I going east or was I going west? We were going to go back to the west. Yeah. Okay, so now I have to start with Good for. Okay. You're fine to roll it. 
you know the how to do it and you can do it that way too. Okay. All right. Anything else? No? All right, good. Take off your blindfold. Break this. Mm. Push the uh, oh, this thing makes your face sweat. Okay. 